Hey guys, so if you've been watching my AFL history series of videos, you've probably seen the most recent one, which is about the history of State of Origin in the AFL, and why it died out over the years. So making that video kind of got me thinking, what could State of Origin be like if it was back in the AFL for 2020 and beyond? So really the first thing you've got to kind of work out is just what would State of Origin be? I kind of think there's about three concepts that could maybe work in this day and age for State of Origin. The first of which is the State of Origin Weekend. Now in this concept you'd have pretty much every major state and territory represented. You'd have WA, South Australia, Victoria, Tasmania, Queensland, New South Wales and the Northern Territory. Now obviously the problem with that is that's seven teams, that's uneven, so we need an eighth team. Now of course you could say well why don't you just have a team to represent the ACT in Canberra. But I think the problem with that is would you be able to get enough talent to fill an entire ACT based team and if so would that talent really be any good compared to the almost all-star teams you've got for Victoria and WA and SA and all these teams. So the way I thought you could do this is to maybe make that eighth team an allies team that's basically made up of players from the ACT as well as players from pretty much anywhere outside of Australia. So if you've got someone like Mason Cox for example who's obviously American can't really represent any of the other states so having an allies team that's made up of players from the ACT as well as from any of the countries outside of Australia allows basically any player in the AFL no matter where they're from to take part in state of origin. So with eight teams that makes four games spread across the weekend probably a more traditional three-day footy weekend which would work out something like this on friday night you'd have victoria versus south australia at the mcg on saturday afternoon you'd have queensland and new south wales going head to head at the gabba then on saturday night wa versus tasmania at optus stadium and then on sunday northern territory versus the allies somewhere up in the northern territory now there's positives and negatives with this concept as there is with all of these concepts. The positives I see for this concept is that every state gets represented. You know, you're not having any teams merged or made up outside of the Allies team, but with ACT and internationals. It's every state and territory getting to, you know, wear their own jumper and represent themselves, which I think is a real positive. But I think there's also a couple of negatives on this concept as well. One of which is how big of an interest would there be in the smaller games? The question would be how big of a crowd would you get to a game between Queensland and New South Wales? The other problem with this concept that I see is that there's no real champion. You know, having four games, you can't really have any kind of tournament style system. Either you have just no champion and there's four equal champions, or else you basically just play out the games and award the champion of that year's state of origin to be whoever won by the most or had the best percentage or whatever, which is a little anticlimactic. The second concept is the State of Origin Carnival. Now, I'm calling this the AFLX format. And before you have a go at me, I'm not saying we should play State of Origin using AFLX rules. This is more or less normal rules, just shortened games. It's basically using the same format to what they used for AFLX at the start of 2019. Basically, in this format, you'd have four teams Victoria, South Australia, WA and an allies team made up of anyone else and you'd play in a round robin format so every team plays each other once and at the end of those games the best two teams go on to play in a grand final for the championship or the trophy. So the positive I see in this model is that everyone gets to take on each other you know both SA, WA and the allies they all get a crack at the Vicks and all play each other and the other positive of that is that you of course get an overall champion, you know, one team who has been the best state out of all those games. And it is much more, I guess, fair and legitimate than, you know, the previous one where you're just winning based on percentage or whatever. In this one, you really do take on all the other teams. And if you do end up winning the championship or the trophy, you know you've been the best out of everyone there. The big downside of this is obviously that you have to have an allies based team that has, you know, the majority of the other states mixed into one. One of the big things in the state of origin is being able to represent your state and your heritage and where you come from. And obviously for the majority of players, they won't get to represent their own state. You know, they'll still get to take on the other states and represent a team, but having an amalgamation team like this doesn't always go down so well. Now the third and final concept that I could potentially see happening is an all-star game. So this has kind of been talked and debated about amongst AFL fans in the past and this is basically the East v West concept similar to what they do in the NBA in America. So the positive of this is of course that you get one big game that's kind of you know just two teams going head to head but the problems are obvious with this one is mainly how do you divide these 18 AFL teams 
into an east v west kind of concept when the majority of the teams are based in one state do you divide that state up into two do you you know have it be the victorian teams representing one team and the non-victorian teams representing another and then of course the real question with this concept is would anyone really care? I mean, yes, this is an opportunity to see the best players in the AFL, you know, playing alongside each other. The real grab of State of Origin is that people already have an allegiance and a loyalty to their team, to their state. You know, if you come in and it's just pick a side East v West, I don't think people would really be as passionate about it and would not necessarily support it as well as they would a more traditional state of origin concept. Again, this is kind of similar to AFLX in 2019, where they just kind of came up with these four teams and you know, you just had to kind of jump on board and they hoped that the fans would become, you know, passionate about a certain team. I guess the question is, even if those four teams from AFLX, if they played under normal rules, not AFLX rules, would you necessarily support one team you know would you be able to be passionate about that i wouldn't think that would be the case and i think most people would be much more passionate and get behind their team if it's their state in state of origin so honestly out of all the three concepts this all-star game i think is definitely the weakest now the other big question with state of origin is when would you fit it into the afl calendar again i see three kind of options for this the first of which is play it in the preseason again similar afl x in that first week of the preseason Maybe you could have a state of origin type tournament or weekend or something like that. This could potentially make pre-season a bit more interesting, but at the same time, I kind of think, doesn't state of origin deserve a lot better than that? Rather than just shoving it in a spot where, sure, fan interest is high because, you know, they've been waiting all off season for some footy, but, you know, you're gonna have your players who aren't gonna be going at 100%. You're gonna have a bunch of players who aren't gonna play because maybe you know they're not ready for the start of the season yet or whatnot you know the same kind of things we see in the usual pre-season games do we want these same problems in state of origin and the truth is you're probably going to get that anyway with state of origin to some extent you're going to get a bunch of players who you know don't want to risk it and don't want to play and all that kind of stuff no matter what you do with state of origin players are not going to go in as hard as they would for a regular AFL season match. Sure, that's going to happen whenever you play State of Origin, but I think especially in the preseason, players are going to be uh, much more protective of themselves and um, take it a bit easier. So the second option for this is to play it in the middle of the season, somewhere in the middle of the season, um, either to replace the buy or have it as a kind of second mini buy, I guess. In a lot of ways, I think this is one of the stronger options. We've definitely heard a lot about players and coaches and stuff wanting a second buy, you know, a second break for the players. Um, and this kind of gives them that. So this is, you know, one of the stronger options, I think. The third option is probably my favorite, although it only works if you do the AFLX style round robin state of origin tournament. This option would be to play it on the grand final eve. So the Friday night before the grand final. Now I really like this idea because I think it not only is a way to have players who aren't part of the grand final included in that weekend to some extent, you know, and fans from other clubs that aren't competing, you know, it's, it's a way to kind of have them included and have them have a team to support really on that weekend. There's really nothing going on on that Friday before the grand final and you feel like having something like State of Origin would really help with the anticipation and the build up towards the grand final. But the obvious problem is that the two teams who are competing in the grand final, none of their players can play in State of Origin. And you know, if you've got a grand final between say Geelong and Fremantle, then you've got guys like Joel Selwood and Paddy Dangerfield and Nathan Fife. you know, none of those guys, three big stars of the competition, none of those guys can play in State of Origin, which would take away from that tournament just a little bit. But again, that's a small problem. Okay guys, so those are some of my ideas for how State of Origin could work if it was to come back over the next couple of years. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts. Do you want to see State of Origin back or would you rather not have it? And if you do want to see it back, how do you think it should work out? What do you think of these ideas and maybe put some of your own that I didn't come up with? Also make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this.